Can't get your Epson 1430 print head to clear manually. Tired of wasting films, paper, and ink, ultimately money. Stick around, I'll show you how to remove and clean your print head for your Epson 1430. Get that right, Apollo. All right, so the first thing you're gonna have to do is turn your printer on. Just kind of wait for it to go through its sequence, fire up, and then once it's fired up, hit the ink button. That will make the cartridge or the print head go to its ink location. And then you wanna remove the power cord. What that will do is allow you to be able to move the head back and forth freely. Open up your cover, take your inks out. I use a sandwich bag here. You could use some plastic wrap to put them in. Uh, this is basically just to keep them from drying out while you're removing your print head because it might take a little bit of time. All right, so there's a little clip on the left and then there's a clip to the right. The one on the right is the biggest pain in the butt. It will be pretty hard to remove. During the process, I do think I popped that little right clip off. Here it's removed and you can kind of see how it comes apart. This is the little retaining clip that holds the cover as well as the ribbon cover on. So here I'm removing the ribbon cover. There's a couple little clips. You can just use your flathead screwdriver as I have been in this video thus far. You can see how the clips attach to the top right and to the left. And it just kind of keeps everything all nice and neat. This part's pretty simple to remove, but knowing where they're at helps quite a bit. Okay, moving on to the next part. So this part here is basically the, the back that reads the cartridges. And it's just one good size piece. Here it is removed. It's got some ribbons that go into it. But what I'm showing you here are the little clips that you kind of have to pry with with the screwdriver and this part is a real pain in the butt too uh it i mean it's pretty straightforward how to take this thing apart but it's it definitely takes some finagling to to get these parts off so i'm just taking my screwdriver and kind of reaching around the back trying to pull those clips if you have a smaller screwdriver that will help quite a bit so you can see the right side has popped up a little bit and then I popped up the left side and then the whole thing just kind of slides out. And then at this point, we just remove the, the ribbon from it. You can see how that goes in there. Pretty simple stuff. Next, there's three Phillips head screws and you just have to remove those. And then once you get those out, I mean, you're pretty much home free. So here, here I am just kind of fumbling around, taking those out and then extracting the the print head itself and then you just have to remove two separate ribbons from the actual print head itself we'll be in there a little snug we'll just go ahead and, and pull those out and here's just a shot of the the top of the print head and then the bottom side of it and that's where the ink actually comes out and i'll show you something really cool here in a moment What's going on here is I just have a 50-50 mix of Windex and rubbing alcohol. I'm just setting the print head in there to just kind of let it soak for a little bit. If yours is pretty clogged, you might need to let it soak for 24 hours or so. But here you can see I'm using a medicine syringe to take some of that solution and then just force it through each of those little plungers or whatever you want to call it. And you can actually see uh, how this thing kind of works, which is pretty cool. You can see it just shooting down. And what you want to look for is you just want to make sure each of those openings is completely... You have that fluid coming through. And this isn't going to hurt it whatsoever. It's just kind of getting rid of any of the dried up stuff in there. And that will completely clear it up. Now at this point, I'm just putting it back together. You gotta put your ribbons back into your, your print head and just make sure they're in there nice and firm. Be sure to check the, the metal connectors on that and the pins. Make sure you're putting those in properly because if you don't, you'll have to repeat this process and do it correct. So the print head's going back in and I'm putting the three screws. 
to hold it down. Uh, just just tighten those up, finger tight. I'm yelling at the kids there because they were here at the shop. I recorded this. We just slide that backing plate back in and just kind of pay attention to how your ribbons go back in place. You want them back to OEM spec. Then the retainer cover just slides back on, locks into place. You can see how everything's nice and clean. And then at this point, we got the little clip that goes back in that holds the door and the ribbon retaining clip. I left the door off personally because I did install a CISS kit, so. Okay, now we're going to do a nozzle check. I just opened up my preferences, went to printers. I'm gonna double click on the Epson Artisan 1430. Gonna go over to my settings. And I'm going to pull up my utility and open printer utility. Then I'm going to click on nozzle check and I'm just going to follow the prompts. Print. I've got some paper loaded up in the printer. Looks like it could use a little bit of a clean there. Aside from that, it looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and do another clean. Looks good to me. Everything's where it should be. Next thing I'm going to do is do Next thing I'm going to do is a print head alignment. And then I'm just gonna follow the prompts on screen here. Since some of these seem to be fairly close, what I'm going to use is my loop. That way I can get a little bit better of a view and see what it's actually doing. I'm thinking on this one, I think seven might actually be the best because six, seven, and eight all appear to be fairly close. I think I'll just go with seven. So I'm gonna mark seven. Next ones that seem to be fairly close are seven and eight. Let's take a look at those. I think I may go with seven because it eight does kind of have some little bars in it that seven does not, so I'm gonna go with seven. Now, let's see what seven, eight, and nine look like up here. Nine looks pretty good. Seven looks pretty good as well. So does six. I think if anything, maybe I might end up going with nine. Maybe I'll do eight. If you got it under the loop a little more closely off camera, I think I'm going to go with nine. So we'll toss those into the printer settings. Now all we have to do is enter those numbers right here into our number one, two, and three slot. And then we'll hit finish. Be sure to check your head alignment periodically because since the time of filming this video, it was back in November, it is now the end of August and we have completely different results. So be sure to check it periodically so that way you're getting the best print results. Thanks for tuning in. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. Be sure to check out our video cards either here or here and I'll show you how to install a CIS kit so that way you can save even more money and it will run you about 45 bucks. Until next time, we'll see you later. Eh, eh.